Now is M7. M7 is going to be an applique block and there is a bit of a modification. It's the same basic pattern. It's just been made a little bigger. So this is the actual size of it. And we've got this piece is going to be the red and then this is background. And then these pieces are all red. Um, I've got them laid out here. If I can get this moved, okay. This is my background, so I'm just going to baste this around the edges, so that'll just be, you know, straightforward. These are going to be a little bit less straightforward. For these football shapes, I'm going to use a gathering stitch on each end. I'm, um, I'll come through here and do a gathering stitch and then pull them tight on both sides. And then on these, I'm going to do a gathering stitch on this side and I'm going to do little notches. I'm going to cut little notches on the fabric, not quite all the way to the paper, but close. And so I'm going to do little notches here so I can, when I pull this to baste it, it'll open it. I do have a video associated with how to applique, how to do basting on applique pieces and things like that in my basting video. So there is a detailed technique on that if you need to go back and deal with that because I'm not going to cover the specifics on that. But um, I am going to get all of this kind of thing. So the ones that are inside, inside arches are going to be notches and the ones that are outer arcs are going to be gathering stitched. So the biggest problem for this is going to be placement because I have this unmarked piece of fabric. So what's going to happen here is I am going to um, baste this and then I'm going to take a pencil and make an X. So that way I can place this properly with the rest of the pieces as well. So what I will do is get this basted and make my little pencil X and then baste the center portion so we can get started on placement. So I've appliqued the center section onto the center of my X. I'm not sure if you can see my little pencil lines, but um, they're there. And so now the next part I'm going to do is I'm going to take the little footballs and I'm going to line them up on the lines because these are going to go between the lines. So I want to make sure that I got my whole line established first. So I will gather stitch my footballs and attach them here. So I've basted and attached this football down here and I've basted and stapled this one to the paper so I can then stitch it onto the background. So I'm going to get to that and then I can be able to get to the other two. So this one's been appliqued on and I've basted and stapled this one down so I can attach this one next. So I've attached my third football and I've now basted and stapled my fourth one in place so I can applique it down. So I've attached my fourth football to the penciled in X that I have. And my next step is to attach these little swoosh things between them. And then these are going to be my, my points to line them up to. I've uh, done the basting on the inside curve with my little notches and then glued them down. And I'm going to put my gathering stitch basting on one and then attach it. And then I do this in, in order. So I keep my fabric in the right direction since I have a directional fabric. So I'll get started with one at a time. So I've placed my next piece to be appliqued, but it was a little tricky. This piece ended up being a little bit bigger than my space that it needed to go in. So if you want to see this, of course this little stuff is going to be underneath my tip. But this tip needs to be here, this tip needs to be here, but there's some dimensionality here that happened because of the way that I had to put this on here. So when I put it on here, it was this was just slightly past this point and this was slightly past this point. With this being red on white, it is a blaringly obvious thing that needs to be right. So I kind of got it in place and then I moved one tip to where it needs to be and I stapled it down right here. Then I moved this tip where it needs to be and I stapled it down right here. And I had to do this a couple different times 
because of the way that the shape is and all that. So I would staple one and it would be, you know, then another one. And so it was a couple trial and error. I've got a few holes I did and removed in the back. But now I can applique this down. This dimensionality will be able to work into the final product because once I take the papers out and take the staples out and all that fun stuff, it'll just work in to be the when it's quilted. So I'm going to get this applique down and then I can remove the staples and the basting and move on to the next one. So I've finished appliqueing on my first piece like this. You can see I've got my points where I need them. So the next thing to do would be go to the next piece and carefully place it like the last one. So I've attached my second one and in the process of that attachment, because these were probably a little too close together, I have, um, they're not exactly perfect and I'm hoping that quilting will fix that later, but there's a wrinkle. It looks like a wrinkle, but really it's just a ridge of the paper. The fabric itself is not actually wrinkled. So I'm going to leave this alone because it'll go and get kind of puffy when I take the papers out. So once I'm able to get to the paper, when I attach this into my row, this will just be a little bit of excess fabric, which will then work itself in when you're quilting it. So I'm not going to worry about this wrinkle. And then um, when I stapled this one, there was no wrinkle that formed. So I did try to minimize this, but you know, it happens. So I'm just going to go on and attach my third unit. So I've attached the fourth arch to my block and there is a bit of dimensionality to it, but like I said before, it will go away once the papers are out and it gets quilted. So in the meantime, my M7 block has been completed.